So let me hold my teacup because I feel like this would be nice. Well, good evening, adventurers. So kind of you to drop in into my quiet, majestic home. Welcome back to Dungeons and Dragons discussions. And discussions. Excuse me. <laughs> uh, as always, I'm Rick Quasar. With me today is Mr. Jeff. How are we doing today, sir? I am doing just ducky. Just ducky. Great. Just. Today, sir, we are talking about the majestic deities that guide our ways in the world of D&D. Uh, I mean, I guess technically the dungeon masters would be considered deities, but the actual deities, those that give power to the clerics, paladins, and warlocks in many a game. Do you feel up to discussing? I do. I don't know about majestic. Uh, ah. Any game master or dungeon master out there brings demigods or deities into their game, it's usually a menace. Mm. Ah. Ah. <laughs> yes! That is actually really good. Um, uh, Stranger Things, I don't know if you're a fan of that uh, TV show. Oh, okay. mm. So, all of the creatures and monsters that they fought, they've been naming after, uh, you know, D&D characters uh, and monsters. So, so now that the newest season is has released and the biggest monster they're fighting is called Vecna, well, of course, D&D Beyond has decided to snap, snatch that up and take the ride that gravy train. Uh, but we are talking about the deities, the gods in D&D. Um, and I'm going to do something a little different. I'm going to warm us up because I'm not going to ask the main question just yet. We're going to, I'm going to do a string of smaller questions to lead up to the main question. So, first little mini question. Exactly how does a god come to their power? Okay, it depends on what train of thought you go by. Hmm. Are they just something that's been there since the beginning of time? Are they just really powerful beings who have somehow attained a different level of immortality or, or something to that effect? Like, for instance, uh, I kind of like how Marvel uh, Cinematic Universe handled like the Asgardians and everything. They talked about it being they're just basically from another dimension, another realm. And they're just not necessarily gods. They just call themselves out when they come to Earth. Mm. Uh, so you can go by that. So how do they get there? Either they're born with it. They could be an alien race, you know, coming to Earth and claiming or to whatever world you're on, Greyhawk, whatever world it might be, mm. claiming that I'm a god. It could be someone who's attained so much power. I think of EUs and um, Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, he was a demigod from... Well, at least from the 80s, I don't know if he's still <laughs> carried around anymore. He was just a very evil uh, wizard who just kept attaining power and made himself a, a demigod. Excellent. Uh, there's also the theory that if you can get people to worship you, doesn't matter who you are, the more people you are, the more powerful you become, you become a demigod or, or some form of mm. god or deity. And uh, if all if all your followers are wiped out, then you lose your power. That your power comes from your followers. Yeah. So uh, speaking of Vecna and the very popular Critical Role series, mm -hmm. um, Vox Machina, the first campaign that the cr cr uh, that the group did, uh, they did come across Vecna, um, and how Vecna got his power is by amassing followers. So he had his own little city. They all worshipped him. Uh, he did have a jump start already because he uh, like was a powerful, um, powerful person. So there was also a different uh, goddess, uh, the Raven Queen, who also was a regular person who but she i don't think she got I, I didn't catch the whole story about her she got she came into her power versus mm -hmm. having followers um, i mean after she had followers but the raven queen is a obscure uh, uh obscure god in that world though a god nonetheless um anyways but going back 
to what you mentioned. That is, a, that was very good. You actually landed exactly where I wanted you to. Uh, the discussion about the, a god can get his powers by followers. And so that brings me into the main question. Can a person become a god if they have undead followers worshipping them? Undead followers. I guess it depends on what you mean by undead. If you're talking about a brainless zombie, I would think no. Mm. If you're talking about vampires um, or golems or... Um, what other type of undead are there? Liches, stuff like that? Then mm -hmm. I would say yes, because I would say a lich can ascend to deity or godhood with enough followers. But I don't, I don't think zombies would count. Mm -hmm. they, they don't really have a uh, thought process. Most, S most zombies and whatever stories or so so this is here this is what cut so this is where blah, blah, geez louise man she totally ruined my train of thought freaking um so is it a, th a form of thought process though or is it something that has to do with the very soul of the person you know what i'm saying because where exactly in what essence does a god get that power from the person worshiping them is it a matter of oh i acknowledge this god's existence or is it the per the soul of the giving them power basically i would have to go with it's the belief mm. that it doesn't necessarily have to do with either or it's sort of like a, i I believe in fairies. I do, I do. So <laughs> thus pixies and sprites are exist. But you know, and if I say I don't believe in fairies, they drop dead. It's sort of like that. It's very similar to that is my mm -hmm. line of thinking when it comes to uh, RPG gods. Cool. There are some that are immune to that. Uh, I would think the ones that have amassed enough power or, or are strong enough to survive not mm -hmm. having followers because they are they are preserved through history, like Zeus or Odin or um, someone to that effect. Yeah, because they're written in the history books now. Their name... Yeah, so, thus, so thus they still exist. They may not be as powerful, mm -hmm. but they still exist. There was, a, uh, there was a horror story that I read a long time ago about, about a uh, monster who only is, gets as powerful as long as his name is 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 known uh and actually like it was like a short it was like a short novel um a short story uh where it's the ears where you read it it's the perspective of the monster so he is so he's describing how oh i used to be so powerful but the world doesn't know me but if i force this guy to if i implant this name into this man he'll start to write the story and then you realize that it's the story that the man is writing through the and so that way the name of the monster gets spread and he gets more powerful so it's like okay hey zeus hades uh Ares, there we go their names are they are powerful because their names are in history books and whatnot as well as other D, &D gods like the everlight or the raven queen etc etc or pitch black from rise of the guardians that's the one with Jack Frost. Oh, Santa oh, Boston. yes. Ah, oh, that's a he's the he's the boogeyman. Yeah, underrated. His power only comes from if people fear him. Mm. If they know who he is and fear him. Underrated so movie. That, it's an underrated movie, but I think it helps better explain these incarnations, these fictional, mythical characters that uh, if they're not believed in, they they start to fade out mm -hmm. and they can't be seen or heard or affect the world. So. In D and D, uh, with the problem with Vecna is once Vecna got the power that they needed, um, he was he was unstoppable. He was a god, so they couldn't kill him. What they actually ended up doing is they is um, the whole concept in the world of Matt Mercer is the realm of mortals and the realm of immortals are separated by a divine gate, and all the immortals mm -hmm. are on the other side of the divine gate can't mess with the mortals and the problem main problem was vecna was in the mortal plane not the immortal plane so they had to send him that way um that was the main problem so they shunted him across the way but what they talked about was oh he has power he's now a god 
So in that case, do you think that once a god has amassed the power, it doesn't need its followers anymore? Again, it goes, it all depends on what theory you go by. I'll use um, Thor and Loki. Hmm. Not necessarily the uh, Marvel Cinematic Universe Thor and Loki, but even the comic book Thor and Loki or mythological Thor and Loki. Um, so they are powerful no matter where they go. They just go to some realms, not their own, where they are more powerful than the other beings there. Um, so they will still remain powerful whether people follow them or not. I mean, mm. technically, Superman could have done the same thing. Come to Earth, lands in Kansas. He could have became a god and just ruled the planet. We're falling. We're um, falling into injustice territory. So he just he just chose not to. Um, so again, it all depends on what what thought process you uh, adhere to mm -hmm. in your game. Um, I I think I I kind of in my game uh, I kind of touch on all of them. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Average Rick Quasar can be playing my game, um, start getting more and more powerful, um, gets a small, you know, group of followers, then he gets more followers, then more followers, then it, then eventually he will ascend to the next level of uh, consciousness, mm. <laughs> which is which deity, <laughs> deity, deities, which which um, which no one likes, no one likes deities yeah. in, the, in no. his world, <laughs> and I, I, and I cannot no one likes them, no one likes them. And I, I put different levels on them. Like a demigod is someone who's immortal. They won't age anymore, right? They can live for thousands of years or whatever without aging, uh, but they can still walk around the mortal realm. Uh, uh, a full-blown full, full blown god, yeah, they would be in whatever realm they come from. Like someone like, uh, like say, Rick Quasar, right? Mm -hmm. He comes powerful enough as a deity, uh, a demigod, and it's time for him to ascend to the next level. Uh, he would probably have some sort of patron god for that to happen in my game. Uh, however, in my game, uh, my player characters, uh, I, I I give them the chaos card. They can mess with it as much as they want. <laughs> so currently in my game, I've been my game's been running for 41 years. Currently, there are no gods. They've been banished once again and trapped in their own realms. Yeah. So there's no patron god or demigods to happen. There'll be people who can call themselves demigods or gods. Again, they're just powerful people. Mm -hmm. um... Powerful. Order. And this is a good time. I I I think I mentioned this at least at. Let me try that again. This this is a good time to mention that I mentioned this at least every one of these videos. These are opinions. These are not oh strict rules that you have to follow. These are just little. They're they're more like guidelines. <laughs> yeah, they, honestly, yeah, they are opinions. Yeah. I'm not Joel Schuster. The create. You know, I'm not one of the creators of uh, Superman. I am not. Uh, one of the original writers for TSR games, which created Dungeons and Dragons. I'm not mm. Gary Gygax, that's for sure. Yeah, these are all immortals in the realm of uh, fiction, sci-fi, and fantasy and yeah. fiction. Uh, these are just our opinions of people who've been doing things mm -hmm. for a while. And there's a whole lot of different things that are tossed up in the air because you know it's magic. There's really no way of really yeah. describing it. So here we are offering just some sort of explanation, just in. <laughs> And that's the beauty of uh, role-playing games, fantasy games like mm. this, is that you can do whatever you want. Uh, you're talking specifically Dungeons and Dragons. For instance, they have a set of guidelines. I'm sure not every dungeon master goes by the guidelines uh, to the letter. Mm -hmm. I'm sure there's always room for morphing and, and expand, uh, expanding and expounding upon it. I mean, that's what I did back in uh, 1981, 82. I decided that I like Dungeons and Dragons, but I'm more of a superhero um and and secret agent type of guy so i created a whole new game that just kind of mashed it all together mm. where all of it can happen you can have an elf who's a secret agent you can have uh somebody who has superpowers who's a jedi knight hmm. don't get me started on the uh the tech lords who are trying to implement technology and magic into one thing that's in my game yeah, yeah that... the tech lords yes who think science is better than magic or they're trying to get them to there's always a battle between them. Back to back to the uh, back to the question. Back to the main question at hand. Um, so we talked about how okay, yeah, maybe the gods don't need a follower. It just depends. Um, so, in your opinion, let's say all right, let's say they just they have a 
small ounce of a brain cell in them, enough to think like one uh five five intelligence points do you think that a zombie with five intelligence points can still worship something and contribute power to that deity so i would probably get lots of people that would argue with me on this one my answer still would be probably not however it's the same as uh hopefully my dog's not nearby listening to me and hopefully jericho you don't hear me <laughs> it's sort of like having a pet dog right he loves me and it would appear that he worships me um i can have many dogs and that's not going to make me the god of dogs mm. uh, a zombie doesn't have that much of intelligence it can be devoted to somebody it could be uh like say you're the whatever the necromancer or sorcerer or wizard mm -hmm. lich whoever that created the zombie they may be dedicated to you but i don't think it's the same as a conscious free thinking of choice yeah free will that says hey this is my guy or gal that i'm gonna mm. follow okay um, yeah i don't think i don't i don't think that's why you know you don't have hey i collected all the snails on the seashore and now they worship me so i'm the god of snails it's not uh work. yes yes well, you can work in your <laughs> yeah yeah you're totally a master, you're watching this that's up to you yeah you can, you can do that that i think that just brings me a nice question and probably the last one to ask what if a zombie raised raised fresh from the grave was given a typical human intelligence at that point would you that be is something different mm. so that is very much along the um Marvel Comics, a character of uh, oh. oh, my brain stopping. Yeah, I know who you're talking about. Part yeah, of, part of the monster fighting squad there. The Howling Commandos. Uh, or... I think it's actually Henry Geirich that becomes a zombie, mm. one of, uh, former Shield agent. But anyways, but he has his normal intelligence. I would say that's different. If for some reason somebody has a zombified body, an undead body, but they still retain their intelligence their free will, their ability to think, then I would say, yes, that, that's different. All right. Cool. Well, thank you, Jeff, for help, for coming and answering this question. Uh, it just came, this, it came across me one day because um, in my one shot series, one of the characters, oh, actually, I can't say that. I can't say it because it's spoilers for what I have planned next. Sorry, guys. Guess you'll just have to wait and find mm. out. Um, definitely not related to uh, people trying, uh, certain necromancers trying to screw the system. But, uh, anyways, uh, thank uh, yes. you. <laughs> characters who always think I can outsmart the system. Oh, uh, it's good. I'm giving him free reign, though, because I want it to happen. Uh, but we'll... I call it giving them rope. Ah, give them bro. <laughs> oh, mm, mm. I got this figured out, game master. I figured you out. Yeah, yeah. All you dungeon masters and game masters out there, please keep in mind: when that happens, you've got to be able to think on your feet. Yes, have your scenario that you want to happen, but it's never going to happen. So, if you've ever played with other humans, they mess with your scenario. Be ready to think on your feet and spin it on them. Always be thinking. Here, here. Um, but thank you everyone for uh, joining us in this little short discussion video. Uh, if you like what you saw, don't forget to like and subscribe. Um, thank you, Jeff, for joining me tonight. It's always Anytime. a pleasure, of course. Uh, as always, I'm Rick Quasar. I'm gonna point to the camera towards you. Oh, towards me. Uh, yeah, I am Game Master Jeff, or yeah. even Game Master Rengate. Ah, ha, ha, ha. there we go. That's even better. And I will see you guys in the next discussion of Dungeons and Dragons. Have a good night. Yeah, keep rolling with it. <laughs>